Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how I made this canvas messenger bag. Now in the main body, it has enough room for my 10-inch tablet, a nice big fat book, uh, enough room for a zipper pouch and whatnot, for pens and pencils and stuff, which still plenty of room to spare. It's got a nice big flap with Velcro to hold it down. Now on the sides, I have some nice long pockets that I use to keep my eyeglasses, my reading glasses. On the other side, I keep my pocket knife. And on the back, it has a nice big pocket for, uh, for another book, or I usually use, uh, I usually use it for a, a writing tablet and whatnot, for taking notes. And then optionally, on the strap, I put some elastic to hold pens and pencils or whatnot. And sometimes I'll put my, my mints or something like that in here. But it's a, it's a fairly large uh, bag. It's a 12 inch by 12 inch and plenty big to hold everything that I need when I'm on a, you know, a day trip or something. Now, one thing I, I did not do with the video, I did not show the actual, a lot of the actual sewing with the machine and whatnot, because I didn't want this to be a, a sewing tutorial. I wanted it to be a tutorial on how I made the bag. So um, if you don't know how to use a sewing machine, then you're probably going to have to get up to speed on that. Uh, but it's not, it's not difficult. Um, I'm a total amateur when it comes to using the machine. Anyways, I'm going to show you how to make this, and you can make this canvas bag for under 20 bucks. Let's get started. Okay, so now let me show you the fabric. The last time that I made one of these bags, I went to the fabric store and bought their canvas material, and it was $16.99 per yard. One yard equaled 45 inches by 36 inches. So I decided I wasn't going to, because I was going to buy like three yards. I decided that I was not going to pay 50 bucks to make this canvas bag. So I went out online and got this. This here is a 100% cotton canvas drop cloth. They use them in construction or painting or whatever, where they cover stuff and protect it. Uh, and this here is a four foot by 15 foot piece of material. And I paid $13.99 for this. Now that works out to about the equivalent of, if I'm doing the math correctly, five yards of material from the fabric store. So you're looking at $17 times five uh, is what it would cost, what this would cost at the fabric store. Now incidentally, this material is thicker than the stuff I got at the store. This is an eight ounce, and I, it, at the store it didn't say well, how many ounces it was, but this is a lot thicker material, so I think it's going to be better. But um, I'll put a link below to where you can go out and take a look at this stuff. Pretty inexpensive, and I think it's going to make a wonderful bag. But uh, I, I have to be honest, I haven't used this before. I've always bought it from the fabric store. But when I got this in the mail, I looked at it, and I was thoroughly impressed at the quality of this material. So I'm going to give this a shot. If you have any reservations, you can always go down to the fabric store and pay a premium price. Um, but for me, I'm going to use this, and I think this is going to work splendidly. Okay, so now for the lining, I'm going to be using a fleece. Now, what this is here, there's two ways that you can buy this stuff. This here is a non-fusible fleece. What a fusible fleece is, you buy it with the glue already on it, and then you iron it to the fabric, and the glue melts, and it adheres to it. Um, it's twice as much. That's why I did not buy it. So I went and got the non-fusible lining, fleece lining and it was about three dollars per yard and I bought a couple yards I'm not going to need the whole thing but um, uh, yeah it was pretty inexpensive so I went and bought this now let me show you how since this is not the fusible kind let me show you how I'm going to attach it okay this is how I'm going to attach this now what you do is you just I'll, I'll show you I'll explain it a little bit more but you just spray it on and then attach it to your fabric and you're good to go. Now, I've heard a lot of people say that they don't like to do this because it, the fusible fleece adheres better. It may adhere better. It may be more uniform, um, but it's twice as much. So I have this already. I use this quite a bit for a lot of different art projects and I like this stuff and I've used it before making other material 
and it has worked perfectly fine for me. So, but if you have reservations about this, you can always buy the fusible fleece. It's a little more expensive. You're going to pay about five dollars for five dollars per yard for the fusible. Uh, this was three dollars a yard or so, and uh, it's 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 totally up to you. But anyways, you could use either. Okay, so for hardware, you're going to need some Velcro. Um, white is best and so on is best. Now I have this iron on. I had it already, so I'm not going to go out and buy some just specifically for this project. But the, the so on type has a flat edge around, around it, and so you're able to uh, lay down your, your stitching. But I'm going to go ahead and iron this on and sew it. Uh, on top of it and then you're going to need some D-rings uh, you're going to need two of them I have a package of four here and you're going to need some elastic I already had this this is three quarter inch and um, you're going to need less than a foot of it so uh, those three things is what you're going to need for hardware okay so let's go through all of the pieces that we need to cut first off you're going to need some three and a half by twelve inch you'll need six pieces of canvas and three pieces of fleece. Okay, next you're going to need some nine by 12. You will need two pieces of canvas and one piece of fleece. Okay, next up is 12 by 12. You will need four pieces of canvas and you will need two pieces of fleece. Okay, now you're going to need some 12 by 13. You'll need two pieces of canvas and one piece of fleece. And then you're going to need four pieces of three and a half by five and a half canvas. Okay, so for the strap, you're going to need two pieces of four and a half inch by 30 inch canvas. You're going to need 60 inches total of two inch uh, fleece. I just got a bunch of pieces here that I'm gonna to sew together. And then you're going to need two pieces of three inch by eight inch canvas. And you're going to need two pieces of one inch by eight inch fleece. And these will make up the strap and the D-ring holder. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to attach the fleece to the canvas. Now, there, is, there are more pieces of canvas than there are fleece, but uh, the, you'll understand the reasoning behind that. But take all of your pieces of fleece and take a corresponding piece of canvas and attach them. Now, I'm not going to show how I do that because I don't do it in the house. It's raining like a booger outside. So I'm going to have to do it in the garage and the lighting in the garage is not the greatest. And so just in the interest of saving time too, because this is turn, going to turn into quite a long video, um, I will just give you a quick rundown on how you do it. Now you'll just take your, you'll just take your spray and lightly spray the uh, canvas and then just take this and put it on it's really simple and I don't don't gob this up because if you put it on too thick you'll actually have a wet spot come through the canvas and you don't want that so just spray it lightly now what you could do is you could spray the fleece and then lay this on top here and uh, you won't run the risk of it saturating too much but the only reason why I do I do it backwards is because this is stiffer and it's easier to uh, maintain it's easier to when when you when you're putting it on here you can actually stretch it a little bit and move it around it's, it's just easier that way but um, it, it, either way it really doesn't matter but go ahead and just spray one side lightly and then just put your pieces together so take all find all your pieces of fleece and then just find a corresponding piece to it and then fuse them together and uh, unless you're using the fusible fleece then you just iron your pieces together and you're good to go. So, okay, so let's go ahead and do our side pockets. We've got our pieces here that are three and a half by five inch. We're gonna sew along the edge of both of these. We've got two of them together. So we'll have two pockets. So let's go ahead and sew the edges of these, just one edge here, by the way. And this is going to actually be the top of the pocket. So go ahead and do a back stitch when you start this. Remember, I'm not a professional, so. <laughs> and make sure you do a back stitch at the end also. Okay, there we go. Now, um, we'll open these up and we're going to iron these. We're gonna press these flat. 
And that, like I say, the closed end is actually the top of the pocket. So we'll go ahead and iron these. And then we're going to grab a couple of our, our two side pieces and we're going to go ahead and attach these to our side piece. Okay, so we've got two of our side pieces, which are the ones that are three and a half by 12. We're gonna measure up five inches, and this is where we're going to attach the bottom of the pocket. So the five inch mark is going to be the bottom of the pocket, and the bottom is going to be the two, the opened end side of those pockets right now. So we'll measure up five inches on both of them. Okay, and then we'll take our pockets and uh, we're gonna attach the, what, 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 what the heck am I doing here? Oh, wait, <laughs> it's gotta go this way. Okay, so the open end side is gonna go to the five inch mark, and then we will fold it up after we stitched it. Now the sides are going to get, um, they're gonna get sewn when we put the front and back on, okay? So let's go ahead and just stitch the bottom of these pockets right now. Okay, so both of our pockets are attached. We just fold those up like that, and we're gonna go ahead and press these real quick. And that takes care of the top and bottom of our side pockets. Do the other one here real quick. And then as I say, the sides are going to get attached when we put the front and back onto the main body. Okay, so let's take one of our 12 by 12s with the fleece attached and go ahead and sew on our two pieces of Velcro. Now I'm gonna go up three inches and in three inches. And that's where the, the bottom corner of my Velcro is going to start. Now this is kind of arbitrary. I'm just using this. I mean, I'm just guessing as to where I want these pieces. But I'm going to go ahead and put a little mark there, right there. So I went up three inches. And this is the bottom of the front piece. So up three inches and in three inches. And those are the bottom corner of my Velcro. Okay, so I'm going to cut about an inch of Velcro. Um, I'm, I'm not sure that it really matters if you use the hook or the loop part of it. Um, I don't think it matters. But I'm going to cut two one-inch strips off of here and attach these. Okay, so I've got these into position here. I'm going to go ahead and press these. Now, as I said before, this Velcro does not have an edge. And so I'm just going to have to blast my string, my, um, my thread right over top of the hoop or loop or whatever I'm, whatever end this is. Okay, so let's start working on the main body. What we have here are the three uh, edge pieces. Now we have the two outside pieces that we worked on earlier with the, uh, the side pocket. And so this is a, a side, that's a side, and then this is going to be the very bottom. Now how we're going to attach these, we're going to turn these over so the fleece is facing out and we're going to attach them just like this. Okay, so we're going to sew with a quarter inch seam allowance just like this. So when we're all done, we're going to have them like this. This one will be here like this and this one will be out like this. So the pocket, the open end of this pocket is facing upward, okay? So let's go ahead and attach 
these together like this and then these together like this i hope that's making oops like <laughs> like that okay so when we're all done uh all the sides are facing the right sides are facing together Okay, so our edge pieces are all done. We've got our sides and our bottom piece here. Like I said, the top of the pocket is right here. And uh, now we're gonna go ahead and work on our back pocket. Okay, so we have the nine by 12 piece with the fleece on it. And then we have the piece of canvas that's nine by 12. We're going to put the two canvases together with the fleece on the bottom. And what we're going to do is we're gonna stitch along one of the long ends. Okay, so we're gonna sew this with a quarter inch seam allowance, and then when we're done, we're going to open this up and fold it this way, so we basically have uh, these stitched together at one end with the fleece in the middle. Okay, so let's go ahead with the canvases facing together and sew this along here. Okay, so we've got that stitched. What we're going to do is open this up, flip it over like this so that the fleece is in the middle, and then we are going to go ahead and iron this, press this down. And then what's going to happen, this is going to be the top of the back pocket. These three edges will get sewn when we add them to the main body like this. And I'll show you that when we get there. Okay, so now we're going to attach our back panel and our back pocket to our edge pieces. So we've got the 12 by 12 back piece. This is the one without the Velcro pieces. We have the pocket we just made. This is the sewn edge, which is the top of the pocket. Okay, and this, we line up the bottom pieces here and it's going to get sewn in just like this. So what we're gonna do is go like this. So we have the, we're sewing uh, right sides together like that. And we're going to do this all the way around. Now it's gonna be very thick. We're gonna have a lot of thick stuff here. So we're gonna to have to get through quite a bit. So we're just gonna take it slow and uh, we'll make this happen, okay? So that's how we're gonna sew this all the way around like this. Okay, so let's do that. Okay, so there's a lot of thickness here to sew. We've got to make sure that we catch the side pocket, catch this back pocket, and keep it all aligned. So let's give it a try. Take it nice and slow. If you have to help it along, be really careful. Okay, so we have our back panel with our back pocket together. And now we're going to take the front panel, which is the 12 by 12 where we put the Velcro pieces on, and we're going to stitch this with the canvases all facing, and we're going to stitch it like this. Okay? Just like that, with the Velcro toward the bottom. Okay, so there is the main body of the bag. I'm going to go ahead and turn it right side out now. Okay, so there's the main body with the side pockets and the back pocket, the other side pocket. Okay, so now let's work on the front flap. Okay, so now what we're going to do is this is our 12 by 13, so we're going to put the two canvases together, and we have the fleece on this one here on the bottom. And we're going to sew along the long edge, the 13 edge, the 13 edge, and the 12, leaving one of the 12 inch edges open. And that's going to attach to the bag. So we're going to go ahead and sew this all the way around. Okay, so there it is. I've turned it right side out. 
And now I'm going to go ahead and press this, iron this down. Okay, so I have my flap all pressed. Now we're going to sew it to the main body. And what we're going to do is take this and sew it to the top of the back panel here with the pocket. We're going to sew it just like this along the top here. Going through the back panel and the flap. And then what's going to happen is this is going to go like this and become our flap that goes over the front. Okay, so let's go ahead and sew this. Okay, so there's the flap. It'll just flip over like this. And then we'll sew the Velcro on probably one of the last things. Okay, so all the pieces that do not have fleece attached to them make up the lining. So what we're going to do first is take all of our 3.5 by 12 inch pieces and we're going to sew the ends together, just like this. Okay, so all the edge pieces are sewn together. Now we're going to take one of our 12 by 12 inch pieces and sew it uh, all along the three sides to the edge pieces. And then we'll flip it over and we'll do the same with our remaining 12 by 12 inch piece. And that will pretty much make up our lining. Okay, so the lining is all done and we're going to leave it turned inside out for now. Okay, so now we're going to work on our D-ring holders. We're going to take our two pieces that are 3 inch by 8 inch and we're going to fold them lengthways and we're going to run a stitch down the edge. Okay, so now we're going to turn these right side out so the seam is on the inside and we're going to press these. And um, turning these out is a little bit difficult because they're so skinny. But what you can do, what I did was I just took a skinny dowel and just kind of inched it along through and it, it, they turned out just fine. It just, it just take a little bit of time. Okay, so after pressing these, you're going to want to take your 1 inch by 8 inch pieces of fleece and then inch them inside of these sleeves. And what that'll do is that'll stiffen them up and give them a little bit of strength. Okay, so now what you want to do is you want to take and slide your D-rings on and then fold these in half with the seams facing each other. And those are going to get sewn into the inside of the bag uh, on the edge and what you want to do is just split the difference of the length here and just and then just go ahead and sew them in you don't have to sew them an awful lot because they're going to get sewn again when we uh, sew the liner in I usually put like two or three stitches along like I put one along the bottom and then put one in the middle and then one on the top okay so now we're going to go ahead and put our liner on now what you want to do is make sure that the bag is right side out and the liner is still inside out and we're going to slide it on and make sure also that the flap is back against the back of the of the uh, back pocket and then uh, make sure that your d-rings are down on the outside they're going to be in between the liner and the bag so basically the d-rings are actually touching the the right side of the bag if that makes any sense and now we're going to sew all the way around the edge and we're going to leave about a six inch opening or so uh, on the front part of the bag so that we can turn this right side out okay now that we've sewn all the way around and left our opening here we're going to go ahead and turn the bag right side out through that opening and just take your time and just do it slowly just work it it takes a little bit of effort but it's not too horrible it only takes you a few seconds okay so once it's turned uh, right side out you're going to go ahead and take the liner and shove the liner down into the bag where it belongs and then now we still have this little opening here that we left and we're going to go ahead and run a stitch along the whole top of that to secure uh, to close that opening just make sure when you do that you actually fold the raw edges down inside so they're sewn over and you don't see them
Okay, so there's our stitch along the top there. And um, there's not much left to do. We have still have to put the uh, Velcro on the flap. And then uh, we have to work on the strap. So let's do the strap now. Okay, so let's take our two four and a half by 30 inch pieces and make one long 60 inch piece out of these by sewing the ends together. Okay, so now we're going to sew it lengthways, the whole 60 inches with the seam out. And uh, we're gonna use about a quarter inch seam allowance. Okay, and one thing I didn't mention, to make it easier to turn this inside out, I went ahead and sewed up one end of it. That way when I, I can turn it, I can start to push the end down a little bit, and then I'll grab a dowel and then feed the dowel through and basically just push the end out the other end, uh, turning it completely right side out. You just got to feed it. You just take your time and do it slowly and it'll it'll it, sh it should take no time at all. Okay, and there it is, right side out. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to press this, iron it with the seam running down the middle. Okay, so there it is all ironed and um I went and just nipped the end off there where I where I had sewn so that I could put the dowel through. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to work on the fleece. Okay, so now I'm going to take all my pieces together here and uh, make up 60 inches. Now, I'm not going to overlap them. The way that I'm doing this is I'm just butting them together and then using a zigzag stitch to stitch the ends together and uh, just make up 60 inches that way. Okay, so how I'm going to feed this fleece through this strap, I'm taking this paint stirrer here, and then I'm going to tape the fleece to the paint stirrer, and then just feed it through the strap until I just push it throughout the other end, and um, then take the tape off, and it should actually go pretty quickly. Okay, there we go, quick and easy. Okay, now to attach the strap, you just feed it through here, figure out how much you need, and then with the seam facing inward, go ahead and bring the strap up. I'll give you a close-up of how I've done this. Okay, so basically I just brought it up an inch or two and then folded the end inside that way uh, it'll keep it from fraying and it won't uh, it won't be visible and then just ran a couple stitches down through it edgewise there and that uh, and then the second to the last thing we want to put our velcro on the the flap and I'm just going to eyeball that too and just just uh, you know figure out lay it down where I think it's going to go and then just put my finger on it part of mark there and then just I'm going to hand stitch it though so I only catch the under layer there so it won't show on the outside of the flap and then the very last thing is the elastic. And this here, I just started it on one end and then just um, stitched it there. And it, I switched stitch through both layers and then put a little hoop in there. And then I brought it over here and stitched it again and went around the back and it just stitched them both together. And it gives me a spot here for a pencil or a pen and then a spot for my mints. But that's arbitrary too. You can make this any size that you want. So. Anyways, that actually completes the bag. That's pretty much it. Well, there it is, guys, my DIY messenger bag slash man bag. And as I said before, I didn't want it to be a sewing tutorial, so I didn't show a lot of me actually using the machine. So I hope that you were able to follow along with it. Um, it would have just been too long of a video if I did that. Anyway, so uh, if you have any questions, comments, constructive criticism, make sure you post them down below. And uh, thanks a lot for watching, guys, and we'll catch you all later.